at G20 event, while India is uh, trying to showcase its art and craft, there are certain technological innovation also, which is clearly uh, in mind of the government to uh, tell the world that how India has progressed on those issues. Uh, we are uh, in the booth where the uh, innovation in the financial sector has been showcased uh, and how the UPI and digital payment gateways have taken over uh, is being explained. Uh, we are joined by Kashyap Balakrishnan. Uh, who is going to explain us. Uh, so tell us uh, what is this booth is all about. Uh, so we are basically highlighting the growth of uh, digital payments in India. So apart from the awareness, the security aspect, we are also giving an opportunity here for our foreign guests to experience UPI. Mm -hmm. So we have the product UPI One World through which we will be onboarding them onto UPI and using which they can experience UPI during their stay in India. So uh, how are they going to use it? Like, Do they have to they install have some to, app yes, on that mobile? They, they will download an app onto their mobile, which we'll be facilitating at the counter in the front. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that, then we also have an experience counter we'll be providing here, mm -hmm. through which they can do a sort of a test transaction. Mm -hmm. And just for some experience, we've given even a, a sort of a standee counter there. Mm -hmm. And we'll be providing them with a photograph which they can take back home. And. Uh, uh, when they are going to transact, what are they going to purchase? Like, uh, do you have any product or something? It, or it, it is uh, just a sort of a, uh, a token product, so it's not mm -hmm. really priced that way. Okay. It's more of a token. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you, uh, I think the, this is the selfie point that you have created for I experienced UPI in India. So, so this is a place where, uh, please, sir, this is a place where uh, those foreign delegates who would. Uh, try to experience this UPI uh, thing, they will. Uh, they can have their can uh, selfie also taken under this uh, frame. Something that they can carry back. We'll carry give them a, a photo of this, which uh, we'll take a photograph, give them a picture, which they can carry back with them. Okay. So the innovation uh, that India has created or achieved in the last few years, it, especially in the sector of financial and technology, uh, that is being showcased here at this booth where all the uh, digital transaction, all the modes of digital transaction uh, has been showcased. This is a booth that has been done by Bharti Reserve Bank. That is. Uh, Reserve Bank of India and the foreign delegates uh, will be able to experience this sold uh, digital payment gateway uh, at this counter. Uh, what are you going to uh, give them as an experience? Uh, we are trying to uh, explain contactless, new modes of contactless payment. So these are new modes of contactless payment and these are like bands? Like watch, keychains, ring. Mm -hmm. So using these you can make a payment. So here we are going to give a demonstration of how they will be able to use these things. So these small items that you can use it uh, as your souvenir also can also be uh, part of your overall financial transactional uh, medium. And this is what this Rupay booth is trying to showcase. Uh, and you will be showcasing to the foreign delegates. Instead of using a mobile phone and making a payment, you could have your uh, prepaid wallet linked to this. These are keychains, watches, band. These are wearable devices. Uh, these are wearable devices uh, instead of a debit card or a prepaid card that you have in plastic form uh, you can uh, make payments via these uh, keychains or ring what you need to just do is you need to tap on the merchant uh, uh, pause device and uh, in a smooth seamless manner the payment gets made okay so this uh, is rupee on the go i can uh, yeah please 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 show us how this uh, non touch device is uh, being used yeah yeah so primarily at a merchant uh, location Collect, I tap it, and this gets processed. Right. So these uh, these small items, they are like uh, 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 attached with those some SIM or some some chips. So yeah, so they come uh, inbuilt with the NFC uh, chip technology, right? So nobody will guess that you are carrying a payment uh, device with you, but these are rupee on the go uh, payment instruments. So your keychain could uh, become your smart card or uh, transactional. Uh, plastic money that once used to be and these chips will be uh, facilitating you for all the transition. This is an experience that the foreign delegates are going to have uh, in terms of India's innovation and in, uh, India's capability as a digital transaction which has uh, in, in, in fact uh, been uh, able to ensure a smooth transition from rural and remote areas to the urban and metro cities from rupees 10, rupees 1 to rupees 1 lakh at one go without any hassle in just two steps or three steps. For the official delegates and media person or other people who are traveling to Delhi uh, to attend G20 summit, but they have very tight schedule and they cannot uh, go out of Delhi or the other states of India, well, there is an opportunity where they can have a glimpse of uh, what India is all about. There are several states exhibition that is uh, happening very much uh, at the venue itself. Uh, we have uh, seen Rajasthan, 
uh, Gujarat, Maharashtra, and almost entire India is uh, uh, present here in smaller booths uh, with their, uh, you know, we're showcasing uh, their art, their craft, uh, and the, you know, uh, folk. Uh, I think folk arts are also very much present here. Uh, we are here in uh, the Gujarat Exhibition Hall, and Madam, could you please tell us uh, what, what this, what are the exhibition uh, that uh, you are showing to the official delegates who will be coming here? We have some patona sarees. Okay. These are very nice. Mm -hmm. This is in pure silk mm -hmm. and uh, original uh, natural colors, mm -hmm. natural dyes. Okay. So, uh, will they be just uh, seeing these elements, or they can buy them also? Yeah. So they can buy these articles also. Uh, and uh, apart from these sarees, you have these uh, paintings or, or some art. This is embroidery. These kach embroidery are very rare and unique in their way. This is uh, what is the uniqueness of this kach embroidery? Totally done, done by hand. Needle work. Mm -hmm. Okay. So these are all handmade crafts done by needle, uh, very painstaking labor that must have gone into creating these pieces of art. Rogan. Uh -huh. Rogan. Rogan painting. Okay. Yeah, that painting. Yeah. Okay. Four months to one piece. Four months? It takes four months to uh, create just one piece. And what all uh, is on this side? Uh, what is this side, ma'am? These are furnishing mm -hmm. bed covers. Mm -hmm. These are all Ajrak printed bed covers. Ajrak printed. And this is Tanka work. Achha, achha. Uh, Sujni. Uh -huh. This is called Sujni. Achha. Baroch. Mein banta hai. Achha. And these are all Ajrak cushion covers. अच्छा तो ये जो फॉरेन डेलीगेट्स आ सकते आ रहे हैं वो यहां से खरीद सकते हैं बिल्कुल वो उनको बहुत अच्छा लगेगा ये देखिए अच्छा जरूर जरूर सो लाइक वी कैन ओनली अज्यूम दैट दे विल बी गोइंग टू लाइक इट दिस ऑल हैंडमेड क्राफ्ट्स ऑफ यू नो क्लोथ्स टेबल वेयर साड़ीज एंड वुलन शॉल्स क्विल्स ओके सो दीस आर बंधेज आइटम दैट मैम इज शोइंग and uh, we will, we hope that uh, foreign delegates are going to like the, these elements uh, of art and craft oh great okay so there's another item uh, which uh, is uh, what is sir tangle or kurta piece okay so this is a kurta piece you can stitch it get it stitched okay great okay so i'll i'll show you some something else also from the other state and this is uh, maharashtra and uh, Okay, so there are like uh, so many nice, I, I think these are Solapuri chapels. Yeah. Kolapuri Kola, Kola chapels, of course. And then these are saris. Okay, pattern saris. And ma'am, what is it? Jewelry. So, where do you make this jewelry? Kolapur. Kolapur. So, these are Kolapuri jewelry items that we are showing. Handmade jewelry. Sub handmade. Sub handmade. So, is this silver work? No, it's not silver work. It's German silver. Okay, German silver. और और क्या आपके पास जो आप उनके लिए लाए हैं अच्छा ओ ये क्लोथ्स टेबल वेयर ओके ग्रेट 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 सर चंद्रयान वेयर इज चंद्रयान ओह ग्रेट and of course, there is a small model of Chandrayaan, and uh, this Chandrayaan has been created by I think bamboo, yeah, bamboo. all bamboo, and it's a handmade. Yeah. Yeah, so, made this in Maharashtra, Chandrapur. Acha. So Chandrapur and Chandrayaan, is, is there any connection? <laughs> actually not, but the, he's, it is a huge success of all all for our Indians, mm -hmm. and actually that's what we want to represent in sustainable manner. That's what the. Uh, main goal of G20 is right. Mm -hmm. So to avoid climate change and to prevent uh, the whole uh, world from climate change, uh, global warming, we are uh, making around 350 plus products with bamboo. Okay. We are the second most largest producer of bamboo all over India after China, mm -hmm. but we were nowhere with bamboo products. Okay. That's why we are developing this kind of bamboo products from diaries, rakis, kitchen cum mobile stands, and so mementos. What's the name? Chandan Kasturwal. Chandan. Yeah. Uh, so Chandan has created this Chandrayaan, and he's from Chandrapur. A lot of uh, chand in this whole uh, dynamics, but then they are the one of the largest producer of bamboo articles, and they are trying to showcase this Chandrayaan sustainable, uh, you know, goal uh, with the bamboo uh, production. Uh, and uh, like Prime Minister Modi has also been focusing on the use of bamboo and how it can elevate uh, the overall economic crisis in several parts of India, especially in Northeast, in Maharashtra, and Southern India, which are like major producer of bamboo. Uh, thank you for talking to us, <laughs> and. Uh,
we have then of course the states of goa which is uh, you know which is which needs no introduction it is uh, very famous for tourists all across the world uh, but then there are certain uh, artifacts from goa which is being showcased here uh, could you please tell us sir what what all have you brought here so uh, you know we are famous for our cashew so you can see um, sample it, it of cashew a, a sample of cashew you can taste some then we have bibinka it is um, a gi product it is one of our uh, favorite desserts mm -hmm. then this is an upcycled product with we had nine, uh, almost 9 G20 meetings in uh, Goa and we had design specific products this is an upcycle uh, product it is a candle mm -hmm. uh, with fragrance of wild flowers from the, our western ghats mm -hmm. and it is packed in a uh, discarded beer bottle oh. so it's an upcycle beer bottle you so can it's just like a sustainability uh, packed with the it's ethnic upcycle sustainability we work towards sustainable development goals so uh, everything is uh, uh, i can also see a lot of artworks here uh, i so mean you uh, can see there is uh, um, you know wood sculpture uh, this is uh, traditional goan window carved in wood and then there are these uh, seashells which uh, mm -hmm. are embedded inside the ceramic items mm -hmm. embroidery items mm -hmm. uh, coconut so this coconut has been created uh, in a in shape of a small it's a bottle with a handle so you can um, uh, store oil or whatever mm -hmm. in it then this is our traditional um, uh, tribal fabric it's called the kunbi fabric we have shawl and then there are artists who have worked on it there are embroidery artists who have worked on it various products of uh, kunbi fabric okay we have terracotta uh, work which is the red earth of goa mm -hmm. and uh, we have huge uh, terracotta artists who work on that and then of course you have uh, you these t-shirts painted with i love goa yeah, absolutely you can i think this is uh, an essential a must for everybody who visits goa and they buy uh, these souvenirs as part of their uh, their memory when they go back home absolutely so uh, these are souvenirs which uh, have a long lasting impression and create an image on goa you can see again uh, terracotta art uh, this is uh, paint on ceramic uh, this is also a very uh, traditional art form again our recycled upcycled candles this is specially created uh, a terracotta art by an artist it's the lotus motif the logo of uh, g20 it is an incense stick holder as well as a collector's item mm -hmm. the artist has signed it mm -hmm. so it's a very um, special item then we have the sea Uh, organisms the starfish uh, um, uh, and the this cockerel. is cashew fruit this is cashew fruit you can it is a bowl you can serve cashew in it you can uh, you know serve mm -hmm. uh, your uh, tidbits mm -hmm. uh, so i think we have uh, something for every taste and we are okay, so like in, in this small booth you have tried to bring in uh, all of goa Absolutely. at one place thank you for talking to us Pleasure. and uh, i mean uh, these are small samples that you have seen uh, of fair state that are going to have a uh, that are going to showcase uh, so many uh, so many stuff from uh, across the goa and uh, it will be uh, the foreign delegates who will be visiting this place they'll be really happy to have a glimpse of entire india at one place we are joined by and be secretary apur chandra uh, he has been uh, in the coordination of all this uh, event that is going to happen and uh, past few weeks must be very uh, very chaotic and very busy uh, how are you feeling right now sir uh, how the preparation has been I think it is for you to answer because uh, my personal feeling is that this media center is one of the best, one of the finest which is uh, which one can imagine, mm -hmm. and all sort of facilities are there. So it is not just the media facilities per se, like the work stations and the internet connectivity and the interview rooms, but apart from that, two major exhibits are there, and that is the one is the digital public infrastructure exhibit where right from UPI to Aadhaar usages and uh, East and Uni and so many other things are shown. Then there is an exhibit by RBI mm -hmm. on the e-payment systems, mm -hmm. in which India has taken the lead. The central bank digital currency and uh, loan easier loans to the farmers. And apart from that, this hall where we are standing, mm -hmm. I think it is one of the finest exhibitions, which will really attract all the foreign delegates and the foreign media. And all the states are represented here. The quality of products here is excellent. 
Uh, so uh, I, I think this this is small hole uh, in a way encapsulates all of India where uh, I mean all the states are having their exhibition their their people are here. Uh, do you see that people will be coming here and buying their stuff also because so many of them may not have time and luxury of time to go abroad go uh, through other other states as well. That is the the purpose is that many of the delegates as you know that uh, most of the heads of states are traveling today. The media is also coming today. And uh, they would hardly have time because tomorrow the whole day the events would be here, mm -hmm. and day after also they would be here. But this is something which where they can just come and spend an hour or so, even mm -hmm. when whatever be their free time. Mm -hmm. And uh, this exhibit will be open till uh, late night, so I think uh, it will attract a lot of uh, footfall and eyeballs. I think uh, there has been some special catering arrangement also for people or the delegates who foreign delegates who would like to have taste of Delhi or other parts of India. Uh, if you could uh, just tell us something on that. Yes, the I mean there is a full-fledged catering available, and uh, this media center will be open 24 by 7. Now it is open, and it will be open till the 10th uh, evening. Mm -hmm. uh, that is 48 hours, more than 48 hours from now. And uh, the entire catering during this period will be uh, free of cost. It will be it is available to the entire media, all those accredited media who will be here. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that they will get a taste of Delhi as well as a taste of India's here. Uh, so apart from the tensions and the deliberation, that, that uh, strong, hard deliberation that will be happening, there is a softer side of G20 also, which uh, Mr. Chandra was telling us all across uh, this hall. You can have a glimpse of all the states of India. Uh, this is a small hall, and you can buy stuff, especially for foreign delegates who will not have that much of luxury of time to go across all the states. They can come, look at uh, themselves, and they can buy stuff as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, uh, as uh, G20 nears in, now uh, we are joined by Special Secretary G20, Muktesh Pardeshi. Uh, we had him just a day ago also about the whole preparation, but uh, now when the summit to begin is like less than 24 hours, how do you see the preparations going on? How do you see the discussions going on? Uh, the tension and the stretching that the two sides or the three sides may be having uh, at the deliberation level. Well, as you know, today uh, the world list leaders have started uh, arriving. A few leaders have already arrived. And we just had a press briefing by uh, Sherpa, who was joined by Foreign Secretary and Chief Coordinator. He has already shared the uh, uh, update with the media friends where we are in terms of uh, discussions and negotiations. Uh, what I understand, there have been substantive discussions, and we are inching towards uh, uh, you know, good understanding. Uh, but what has happened in, in Sherpa meetings, that will be placed before leaders. So let's wait for the leaders uh, to, to deliberate upon them. In the, meanwhile, in the meanwhile, what we are doing today, our international media center is already up. Uh, the place where uh, we, are, we are speaking, it's the Crafts Bazaar. Uh, this has been done for the benefit of uh, leaders, ministers, delegates and media friends. They may not be uh, uh, get time to go out and do shopping. So this is one place where they can see crafts from all over India. I mean, all states and UTs are represented here. And they can pick up uh, souvenir uh, products and most of the products are from one district one product list there are items which are gi tags and then some other special items are also there, there are some live counters there's live music here so this is very enjoyable atmosphere this is a sense of hospitality that we would like to share with the uh, uh, high-level delegations uh, which will arrive at Bharat Mandapam tomorrow. So will this hall, the exhibition hall, be open for other delegates also yes, or it will be just a VVIP movement that will no, be happening? No, no, no. It's, uh, it's open for anyone who is in Bharat Mandapam. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can enter Bharat Mandapam only if you are registered as a media person or delegate. Mm -hmm. So anybody who has access in Bharat Mandapam, they are most welcome. In fact, I'll encourage them to pay a visit and see for themselves uh, uh, how diverse products uh, are displayed and are uh, stocked to uh, uh, sell it off. Okay. Uh, sir, talking about these, those shared path uh, meeting stuff that has been going on, we have just seen uh, you know several prime ministers who have started the journey for India, uh, saying that the Ukraine would be an issue. They'll be raising voice of it. Uh, India has been a bit avoiding the Ukrainization or the you know making the whole agenda about Ukraine. Uh, with Secretary Blinken also coming from Ukraine to India, doesn't it look like the West is very adamant on making Ukraine as one of the core issues uh, that should be discussed at the G20? It cannot be core issue. Why? Because this is an economic cooperation forum. 
mm -hmm. uh, for peace, conflict, and other uh, such issues, there are uh, other forums like UN Security mm -hmm. Council. G20 has evolved in a premier economic cooperation gathering. Idea is that leaders gather here to deliberate upon uh, the financial and economic issues. Uh, well, if there are some geo-economic issues, uh, discussions uh, happen, but they cannot become the core issues in, in, in G20. Uh, how do you see uh, the voice of Global South or you know the concerns of Global South? Uh, and what are the concerns? Uh, if you could just uh, you know share at the background that the, the you know Prime Minister had done that the, that meeting in January, Voice of Global South. So what were the deliberations about? What were the key points that now the Indian G20 presidency is trying to push uh, through the deliberation uh, from the Global South side? One of the uh, I would say the legacy which India would leave behind is that we have raised the profile of the Global South and we have raised the voice of Global South in G20 framework. Before that, no presidency had ever consulted 125 countries. So when uh, the Prime Minister hosted the, the summit on globe, the voice of the Global South in January, we had uh, uh, a kind of consultative mechanism in which 125 countries participated. We were able to elicit uh, a sense of their interest, priorities and concern. So what India is championing, some of the key priority themes of the Global South, this is being done after having engaged them. Hmm. It's not that we got a dream and you just put it like this. We are doing it after entering into proper consultative mechanism. So for instance, uh, prioritization of uh, achievement of sustainable development goals is a key concern for all countries of the global south. We all know that we have slipped away in terms of the, the attainment of sustainable development goals. And if we are not able to attain them, who suffers most? The countries of the global south. So by placing uh, sustainable development goals and their attainment in time-bound manner, India has raised the the voice of the global south. Similarly, if there is, uh, uh, you know, the issues uh, relating to climate finance or access to development finance or women-led development, but also the idea of digital transformation and how it can play uh, a constructive role in economic development itself al uh, is also related to the uh, uh, to the to the uh, the global south. But will the leadership of Global South, which India has championed in a way, uh, be able to also bring in the consensus from the West and the Russia-China uh, axis that the West is terming that? That's happening. That's happening. You know, any, that's the role of the presidency. Uh, the countries put their national priorities and, and interests mm -hmm. and the presidency has to steer through discussions and negotiations in a manner mm -hmm. to arrive at uh, common understandings mm -hmm. and those efforts are underway. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be pre premature for me to reflect on uh, uh, those things because I am not directly in, in the meeting room mm -hmm. but uh, we are keenly awaiting positive outcomes. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Pradeshi, uh, the Special Secretary G20 is very hopeful that uh, there will be consensus that will emerge out of those discussion rooms because the meetings are still underway uh, and no final conclusion has been arrived upon. There are differences uh, that obviously the people have uh, accepted, but then the process of consensus building is still very much on and India is hoping for an outcome-driven G20 this time, if I'm right, sir. Thank you. No, thank you. No, you are very right. We are looking forward to a very decisive uh, G20 presidency, outcome oriented and I would say uh, the key phrase which will sum up our presidency is inclusive. So when we talk about Global South or uh, African Union or the whole of India, that's the inclusive approach which, which uh, reflects uh, uh, I mean our uh, key approach towards the presidency. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you for talking to us. Uh, and we hope that the deliberations will go on and the consensus will emerge and the G20 will be productive. Uh, you have arranged for a media delegation and it has been uh, uh, you know, successful so far. Uh, we'll have to look for the outcome document as well if it brings out the consensus as well. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you.